Hello, everybody. Billy and I are deep in the book of Revelation. Yes, we Billy are. is deeper in it than I am. Well, I'm listening. And so we're looking forward to it. And you know what? Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. That's the last statement and in the book. we will be ready. You and I will be ready. The church will be ready. I believe your family will be ready. Mm -hmm. Pray. If you name their names. Get them in. Witness mm -hmm. to them. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. And that's what this whole book is about. The bottom line is the back last statement. He comes quickly. quickly. Amen. And so he, he's speaking to the churches. He has a message for them. Um, and he begins to speak now to these seven churches which are in Asia. Uh, chapter 2 and verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write. Ephesus was the church that Paul gave the highest revelation to. In the book of Ephesians, that's written to the book of Ephesus. They are the church, the assembly, that has the revelation that they have been raised and seated at the right hand of the Father. There is no higher revelation given to any Amen. church in the New Testament letters to the churches than the book of Ephesus, than the church of Ephesus. Uh, Timothy had been the pastor there. Uh, Paul often was there. My. And uh, then uh, John had been the pastor there. So they've had the highest of all revelations. Isn't that we, 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 as we look at these churches, we remember the key that was given to us in chapter 1. Write the things which you have, the things that are past, the things which are present, and the things which shall be afterwards. Now these seven churches, seven assemblies, they're not all the churches there were, they're not all the regions there were, but they are symbolic. And uh, they're churches that were in existence at that time. It's these things that are. Now, there is quite a bit of study into, are these churches prophetic? Is it the history of the church told uh, from that time in the future? Now, who had been there? I, I want to write my margin. Uh, okay. Paul, Tim John. Paul had been there. He gave, you remember in the 19th chapter, he went there and he found these Ephesians and he said, have you been baptized yes. in the Spirit? And they said, we haven't even heard there was a Holy Spirit. And so then he, he spoke to them. They were baptized in the Spirit, and that was a regular place that he went to. And he gave that high revelation, that letter. Mm. The book of Ephesians yeah. is written to them. All the high book of Ephesians, the book that tells us God's plan to manifest uh, himself uh, to, the, to the heavenlies through the church. Praise and that's God. the book that tells that God raised Jesus from the dead and seated him on his mm -hmm. own right hand. And when he raised him, he raised us, he quickened us and raised us and seated us with him. That's the book that tells us about the armor of God and yeah. prayer. The highest revelation Praise of God. any revelation to the churches of the New Testament was given to the church at Ephesus. Timothy was its pastor at one time. John was a pastor. Now, uh, to this church, which was then existent, and um, some people say that these churches are the history of the church told in the future. I've studied this out. I read Clarence Larkin. He's got this church covers year from this year to that year. This church covers from this year to that year. You can get his book on Revelation and see. Um, personally, I can't just see that this is from that period to that period to that period to that period because I know that he's coming for a glorious church in Ephesians 5. It says he's coming for a glorious church. So I do see that in these churches that were then existent, we find messages for ourselves and possibly they mm -hmm. are prophetic. I don't know. I'm not the expert on that. But in every one of these churches, we can see things that can benefit us. Number one, to every one of the churches, Jesus said, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. So that tells me that the Holy Spirit is constantly speaking to the churches. And He, every individual, as well as that assembly, is called upon by God to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. No one has been this way before. I say this sometimes when I'm speaking to a group of pastors. No one ever pastored a church in this hour before. So you have to hear what the Spirit is saying. You have to be a lampstand for the Holy Spirit, for the light of God, each assembly. And you cannot do it 
trying to be like the world. That's right. We're not to adjust to the world. No. We're no, called no, no. to come out from that, to be connected with those heavenly lampstands before the throne of God, to have the Spirit of God manifest Himself as a light. And sometimes I'm, I'm saddened by what I see in our assemblies. Sometimes I am, Gloria. And I don't want to be a judge. But I know that to, be, to draw the world, we have to give the light. We have to give the light of the Holy Spirit. We have to have the manifestation That's of right. the gifts of the Spirit. We don't shut them off and try to be like the world. Uh, we're not called to entertain. Uh, I enjoy wonderful music and wonderful singing, and sometimes we do have uh, anointed drama that gets a, a point across. But we're, we're called to, to manifest God's light and Amen. power. And Jesus, now think about it. This was written in the year 96. He was raised from the dead and, 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 and went into heaven 60 years before. He's come back. He's left the church. And 60 years later, we already see signs of leaven. We already see signs of danger in the church. Why? There's an enemy. There's an enemy of God. He sees this great body of Christ being built in the earth, and he fights against it. And he fights against it. We see ways here that he fights against it. But in every one of the churches, to every one of them, he said, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And to every church, he says, To him that overcomes, I will give such and such. In every one of those churches, even the worst ones in the worst shape, there were overcomers. And in every one of them, he urged that church to overcome. And then the Bible says faith is the victory. That overcomes. That overcomes the world. The world. The flesh and the devil. That's right. And he said to every one of these churches, he started out with what was good about them. And then, he, and, and, and uh, the Lord, the Bible says that he, the he that he loves, he's going to correct. Mm -hmm. If you don't love your children, you let them go to the devil. That's right. You don't even care. But if you love your children, you want to train them up. And so he corrects those. And he corrects those churches that needed to be corrected. And then he told them, you overcome. The devil hates this book because it shows his ultimate, That's ultimately right. being overcome. And each of the churches are told to be an overcomer. And it tells how to overcome. Yes. And that, that uh, Greek word translated overcome is uh, nikeo, N-I-K-E-O, and it means conquer. So we're never to be conquered. We're to conquer. And Jesus comes in these early days to give messages to the churches. And so we see him in, uh, in the second chapter, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. So he, even today, we went into this yesterday, he's in our midst when we meet. There's one church that he wasn't in the midst, he was outside. But he still said, I'm knocking on the door trying to get in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he's, he, he wants to be in your church and in my church and welcome there. And I want to be in that church. I want to be in that in. church that he's in. Yes, amen. I mean, otherwise you got... Why waste your time? So he said, I know. He knows things about his churches, his assemblies. I know your works and your labor and your patience and how you cannot bear them which are evil. And you have tried them which say they are apostles and they're not. And you found them liars. See, the devil sent them in. Oh, we're apostles. We got this message. Da -da -da -da. But you found out, no. And you have borne and you have patience. And for my name's sake, you have labored and have not fainted. I want to go back to uh, the book of Acts. When Paul was saying his goodbye uh, for the last time, to the church. 
And he told them when he visited them, he said, you watch and take heed to yourselves because wolves are come, gonna come along. And so these are the wolves that Paul had warned them about. He said, I, I'm ready to go to Jerusalem. He was ready to go. And he visited them on the way. And he told them that they were going to have some faults come among them. Well, the faults came among them. And he, he compliments them. He said, you recognized it. You recognized that faults when they came along. Verse 3, you've borne and have patience for my name's sake. And you've labored and you've not fainted. You've not been weary and well-doing. Nevertheless, I have against thee. Now, he's going to give them a warning. Every one of these seven assemblies, God who is love, warns them about what could cause them to become like a later church, lukewarm. He warns them what could cause them to go away from always ascending in God. And here to this church of Ephesus, he says, I have against thee because you have left your first love. You're working. You're working hard. You're doing this. You're doing that. You got all these programs going. You're recognizing the evil. He didn't mention one bad thing here. You're working hard. You're not fainting. But you left your first love. Who is our first love? The head of the church. The Savior that we met on that day that Gloria said to him, hmm. take my life and do something with it. Gloria, as, as far as you go in God, as many television programs as are all around the world, as many meetings as you and Ken conduct, you can't forget that first love. Oh, no. Mm -mm. You can't forget that. And that's why this morning when uh, we got up early and I went in the kitchen to get a cup of coffee and you were there in your jammy <laughs> and you said, I haven't prayed yet because you don't forget your first love. No. Mm -mm. And, that, and that's what causes burnout with preachers. I believe that's true. Yes. A absolutely. The only the only um, safety to keep you from burning out is your first love. And if you keep your first love and you keep your fellowship with your yes, first that's love, right, Billy. you're not going to exactly burn right. out. No. But if you forget your first love, and this is what he was saying to them, you've been working hard, you're laboring, but, but you'll burn out if you forget your first love. There was a lady... Her name, she's in heaven now. Her name is Roxanne Brandt. And Roxanne came by Brother Hagen. She was an evangelist, good evangelist, wonderful evangelist. But uh, in, the, in the midst of her ministry, she, she began to have like a breakdown, physical and whatever. And God used Brother Kenneth e. Hagen to minister to her. And so she would come by and see him. And she came to my office one day and she, she told to me what he had meant to her and what his teaching in the Word. And she said, I had become so busy in the work of the Lord yes. that I forgot the Lord of the work. You can't do that. And it caused a breakdown. And, and Jesus, he, he's, he's, he's not doing this because he's judgmental. He's doing this because he loves us. And he wants the church in the earth to succeed. That's right. And so he says in verse 5, Remember therefore from whence you are fallen or come back and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto you quickly and will remove your lampstand out of its place unless you repent. Now twice in this verse it says repent. And he's, this is the risen Lord Jesus. He's talking to the New Testament church and he tells them to repent. Some people say, we don't need to repent. He tells every one of these churches to repent. What does repent mean? It means to recognize, come up to, and admit that you're going in the wrong direction. And for you then to turn around. When you miss it. When you miss it. You repent. You repent. And you, you head back to God. 
actually in the Hebrew in the Old Testament it's like you're going away from God's yeah, purpose. That's right. And so you see you're going away from God's purpose and he always called upon those Jews, repent. Come make, back to me and my purpose. U-turn make a U-turn. And come back. Come back. Don't let the devil steal your joy, your life, your love. Your life, oh man, no, no, no. You say, well, I don't know if God can forgive. God can forgive you of anything you'll repent of. That's it. In Jesus' name. He absolutely can. And I don't care. I know there's been a lot of, of ministers, Gloria, who missed it and yeah. missed it big time because they forgot their first love and, and his word. And the enemy's after you. Right. He was after you. And I don't care what you fell into. Uh, the Bible says mm. that there are those that are saved as if by fire. The Jews call it the power of repentance. You think of the power of repentance. I mean to tell you can be right up to That's dropping right. off into hell. That's exactly right. And if you on your deathbed or on that last minute of your life that God expands, if you turn to him, his blood can wash all your sins and put you, loose you from your sins, loose you from the hands of the devil. Uh, my son Chip tells this story, and I'm going to get Norval to write this up for me. Uh, I had sent Chip. Chip uh, Norval was doing a meeting for us in Collinsville, Oklahoma, at our church. And uh, Chip and his new wife, Candace, uh, went by to get Norval each day. He was staying at Brother Hagin's house and bring him to the meeting. And Norval would just teach him all the way. And Norval told Chip about a time that he was uh, preaching for Brother Hagin at camp meeting. I believe it was. It might have been at Brother Hagin's Rhema Bible Training Center. And Norval got word that a man in Cleveland, Tennessee died. And he was the meanest man that all of Cleveland, Tennessee knew. And he, his family, his mother and his father, they were mean too and they were ungodly. And so Norval is standing up at Brother Hagin's and he's teaching and he's going to use this man as an example. And he's encouraging the people to live their lives in such a way and give their lives to God lest they go to hell like this man. Suddenly Norval is knocked out, hmm. cold dead. He's knocked out on the platform. And the, and the audience, you know, they get to see him. I mean, the preacher just fell out. He, he, he can't be revived. And Brother Hagin knew it was God. And Brother Hagin said, just leave him alone. This is God. And Norval told Chip that the Lord stood before him, and he said, who are you to say who goes to heaven and who goes to hell? Mm. He said, he let Norval know that the last seconds of that man, That's God can right. do things with exactly. time and space you that no man know. can do that he had appeared to that man and that that man was with him in heaven. And Norval was just shocked. And the Lord said, you're not the one who says goes to heaven, goes That's to hell. Right. But Norval did ask him, how, Lord? He said, his grandmother's prayers. Mm -hmm. I appeared to him on the, on the basis of his grandmother's prayers. So if you've got someone you that you know. don't think is ready to meet God, you lift them up in prayer. The Lord told Sister Jeannie Wilkerson, don't, don't tell people, don't feel bad that I'm coming soon. Don't feel bad that this book of Revelation, you, he said, every name that you name to be in prayer, I'll see to it that they make it. So your business now is Praise your priesthood. God. You That's be the right. priest. You lift up the name to the Lord. You're a kingdom of priests, a royal priesthood. Glory and so God. the Lord told them, he said, repent. Get back to your first love. Spend time with me every single day. But this you have, he goes back again to what's good for them. You hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The Nicolaitans, I've studied a lot what people thought they were. But there's no chapter and verse that says what the Nicolaitans were. Even history doesn't tell us what they were. But let's just say this, it was, it was false doctrine. And he didn't like it. And the devil's always trying to get in false doctrine to the church. That's why I offered the book, Brother Hagin's uh, Daily. The Lord told me you get all of his doctrines into one book, bite-sized pieces. If you go over that every day, your doctrine's going to be good. And every one of these churches, he warned them against false doctrine, the doctrine here of the Nicolaitans. And then he said, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, 
which is in the midst of the paradise of God. We're going to see in the book of Revelation a connection with Genesis. Remember, we saw in Genesis in the paradise and earth, the tree of life. But here we see uh, in the paradise of God, the tree of life again. The beginning and the end. Uh, yeah, the beginning and the end, they go together. They go together. And so the beginning and the end. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll read this here. I read it yesterday from the numerical Bible. God's first thoughts are also his last. He holds to them. He is himself the first and the last, the living and unchanging one. Remember what Jesus called himself first and last, who abides to carry out his purposes according to his own unchanging nature. Thus, it is no wonder if when we reach the end to which revelation brings us, we find that we are once more contemplating the beginning. We're contemplating the tree of life now in the Garden of Eden. And he's bringing you back to it mm -hmm. in the paradise of God. The beginning is now seen from the end in the book of Revelation, as indeed we see that the end was shown from the beginning. Remember what God said to, uh, to Eve? He said, the, woman, the seed of the woman is going to trample him. Yeah. So we're going to see a prophecy brought to fruition here in the book of Revelation. The future more than fulfills every promise of the past, and of necessity, therefore, all prophecy runs on to the complete fulfillment. And what we're going to see here in the book of Revelation is a complete fulfillment of all the prophecies of the book. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank Praise the Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'll, we... I'll finish that thought, too. All right. Um, all prophecies run on toward the close. It, it, in prophecy, there can be a, a types and shadows. There can be partial fulfillings, but in the book of Revelation, it's going to run on to the fullness in the close. In a book like Revelation, all the prophecies of the Word of God run together. The mm -hmm. lines are not confused, but woven together in a perfect pattern for which divine wisdom alone is competent. Praise Thus God. we understand that no prophecy of Scripture is of its own interpretation. And Praise so God. those angels guarded them eating that tree of life. It's going to be back open up to the... Knowledge of all the knowledge. Glory. Open up to the overcomer. Glory to God. We're overcomers. I'm an overcomer. We are overcomers in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're not overcoming and you're being overcome, you need to learn uh, from the book. You need to get in there, do what it says, get in a good church that teaches you how to be an overcomer and how to take authority. God wants victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, the scripture says. Billy and I'll be right back. Over the past 45 years, Brother Copeland has produced 33 musical albums and been honored with a Grammy nomination for the song, Only the Redeemed. For Kenneth, using music as a vehicle to spread God's word was natural. To him, the purpose of singing God's Word is to minister divine truth because the anointing is on the words. Kenneth's purpose for music ministry is, and always has been, to spread the truth of God's love, grace, and power from the top of the world to the bottom and all the way around. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. Word Explosion, October 11th through 13th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downey in Columbia, South Carolina. The Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 8th through 10th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. The 2013 Branson Victory Campaign, March 7th through 9th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. In the book of Acts, chapter 10, first verse, there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. That means he was over 100 Roman soldiers. But he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house. He was stationed there in Caesarea among the Jews and he observed things that he liked. And he gave much alms to the people. Alms are offerings and the people are the Jews. And he prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid. And he said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Your prayers 
and your mm. alms yes, are come up alms. for a memorial before God. We have biblical evidence that our prayers come up before God and our giving comes up before Glory God. Glory to God. And I'm reminded of one of the greatest examples is Grandma Martha. Oh, yeah. And remember, we, we met her granddaughter when we were in California. Grandma Martha uh, well, had been a, a child of a slave. And Grandma Martha couldn't read or write, but it fell to her to raise about six of her children, grandchildren. And, and the lady that told us, her, one of her grandchildren, she said, sometimes we wouldn't have anything. But Grandma Martha, she would, she would say, she was a great prayer. And she said, Lord, we'd sit all around the table. You know that these children don't have any food. And I know that you know that these children don't have any food. And what's more, you know that I know that these children don't have any food. Now, what are you going to do about it? And she said, there'd be a knock on the door and food mm -hmm. would appear. One time she told the Lord the same thing about these children are cold. And while they're sitting there, C-O-L-D, cold, the man with a coal truck, C-O-A-L, yes. dumped coal Dumped into the furnace. But Grandma Martha, every morning she got up, every morning, and she would give something to the Lord. Sometimes she didn't have anything but a pretty rock she'd found or a button. Sometimes it was a penny. But she'd put that up on her bureau, and she'd tie it up in a little handkerchief, and she'd wave Praise it before the Lord. God. Grandma she'd Martha. lay it up on that bureau, and then she'd go to church on Sunday, and she'd gather up all her little offerings that she'd given up to the Lord in prayer. She'd dance into the church in victory. Hallelujah. And she'd say, the dead ought to be raised. Your That's arms right. go up before the Lord. If you give today to this Praise ministry, God. your arms and your prayers will go. You can't buy things from God, no. but they go up before the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we pray over every offering today. Thank you for reminding Thank me you, about Lord. Grandma Martha. She always has been such a thrill to me. And we pray over the offering. We pray blessing on the people Amen. in the name of Jesus as they sow, they reap, as they give. It is given to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall you receive into your bosom. Thank you, partners. Go to church this weekend. Billy and I will see you soon. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. And he's Lord. He's Lord. Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. For more information on Kenneth Copeland Ministries, visit kcm.org.